Hey guys, it's Tim coming at you with an all new Venom related video for this week. As Venom's release date draws ever closer, we know a surprisingly small amount about what the film will actually be like. We have some castings and a teaser trailer, but not much else. However, with what we know, we can speculate on who Eddie Brock will be going up against in the film. Starting off our potential villain list, we have the Life Foundation, who play a big role in the Venom storyline Please Will Protect Her and Separation Anxiety, which this film is seemingly drawing inspiration from. In the comics, the Life Foundation was formed in reaction to the Cold War, believing that it would end with a nuclear holocaust that would cause the mutual destruction of the modern world. Keep in mind they were created in the late 80s when the Cold War was still in full swing, so this idea made some sense back then. In response to this, they built a large fallout shelter for their wealthy clients to live out comfortably in order to create a utopian society. This society would be protected by five symbiotes who were forcibly spawned from Venom, whom we'll discuss in a bit. Now obviously the Cold War ties wouldn't make sense in a modern film, but this could easily be replaced with the Life Foundation being founded on the general idea of creating a utopian society by weeding out all but the elite. Based on what we've seen so far, what appears to be the Life Foundation has Venom in their custody, though it's unclear if Eddie ever had the symbiote before that point. So this could be where they attempt to spawn more symbiotes to further their own goals, or they can at least attempt to get Venom under their control to use him as a weapon. This could have a one-two punch of garnering sympathy for the Venom symbiote as a character, and creating the physical threat for the film. But who could that physical threat be? If we keep it tied into the comics, this could mean the symbiote offspring associated with the Life Foundation, Scream, Agony, Lasher, Riot, and Phage. Scream is the member of the group that ended up getting the most play, not only was she introduced first, but she remained a recurring threat for Spider-Man long after the other four and the Life Foundation were out of the picture. She also has the most intricate design of the group, looking like a female carnage with red and yellow tendrils resembling hair, and a yellow and red body pattern. Her host is Donna Diego, a woman with a history of psychotic episodes who was hired as security for the Life Foundation. Agony is the other female member of the team whose character design is Scream, but all purple. Her host's name is Leslie Gesneria, and she was one of several mercenaries hired by the Life Foundation. Lasher is a green symbiote with a head resembling Spider-Man when he wore the Venom symbiote, a light green torso, and tendrils coming out of his back. He's another mercenary named Ramon Hernandez. Riot has the same design as his father Venom, but all grey and without the spider symbol. Though for whatever reason, the symbiote is dark blue when removed from its host, Mercenary Trevor Cole. And finally we have Phage, an orange or yellow symbiote with a head similar to Carnage with black spikes protruding from its arms and legs, worn by Mercenary Carl Mach. Though Carl called himself the team leader, Scream became the de facto leader of the team. That is, before she lapsed into schizophrenia and killed Carl, Trevor, Ramon, and Leslie. Eventually, the other four symbiotes merged together to form a symbiote known as Hybrid, who was bonded to a man named Scott Washington for a while. Eventually, they defused and were given to three members of the US Army, and an army dog, to help fight off Carnage. It may be too much to ask to see all five symbiotes in a first film, but if any of them were going to be used, Scream would be the most likely choice due to her role on the team and in the Spider-Man mythos as large. But of course, none of these five are the symbiote offspring people really remember or want to see. That would be Venom's first offspring, Carnage. As Venom moved more into the role of anti-hero as Eddie Brock's character developed, Carnage was created to fill the role of the big bad symbiote. Carnage was bonded to serial killer Cletus Cassidy, a truly chaotic man who took to the symbiote so much, not only do he and the symbiote refer to themselves as I as Carnage instead of we like Venom, it actually fused with his blood so he can never truly remove it. Returning any time Cassidy bleeds. Carnage was so major a threat that Venom had to team up with his hated enemy Spider-Man to stand a chance of taking him down. Carnage represents the true chaos the symbiotes can cause in the wrong hands, as well as what Eddie could become if he fully gave in to being Venom. 
which could make for an interesting dynamic on screen. But of course, there doesn't have to be another symbiote as the villain of the film. After all, We Are Venom means that there are two people in the driver's seat. Earlier reports of the film listed this film as a sort of horror film, alluding to the idea that the film would involve a psychological struggle for control. This could mean that our hero is Eddie Brock, and our villain is Venom. The film would instead focus on Eddie trying to stay who he is under the influence of the Venom symbiote, and whether he can control it, or let it control him. This could also very well be the case even if we have an outside villain, and it's an interesting idea to present in the film. But what do you guys think? Who do you think the villain of Venom will be, and who would you want it to be? Well, as always, let us know down in the comments, but until next time, this has been Tim from the Hybrid Network, signing out. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but if you want to take your support to the next level, consider subscribing to us and clicking that bell next to it so you can be immediately informed whenever a new video goes up. Also, you can check out our website for the latest news and editorials, and if you want to take your support even further, you can consider donating to us on Patreon to help our videos get better.